Hello children, welcome to this class. How are you all? I hope you all are fine and doing well. So today we are going to start a new chapter from your beehive book that is a truly beautiful mind. This chapter is about Albert Einstein. He was a great scientist, you know. The title of this chapter, A Truly Beautiful Mind, refers to Albert Einstein because his mind was really beautiful. Actually, this is the short biography of Einstein where some of his qualities have been highlighted like his interest in mathematics and physics and also his humanitarian attribute. The title, A Truly Beautiful Mind, makes one wonder that how can a scientist's mind be beautiful? It is so because in this lesson we come across another aspect of Einstein that he was humanitarian. And he advocated world peace, non-violence and that is why the title refers to him as a truly beautiful mind. So children, let's start. Albert Einstein was born on 14th March 1879 in the German city of Ulm without any indication that he was destined for greatness. On the contrary, his mother thought Albert was a freak. To her, his head seemed much too large. Here, destined means uh, his luck as a great person and freak means abnormal who don't uh, talk or behave like other persons. So, Albert Einstein was born on 14th March 1879 and he was born in a city named Alm in Germany. When he was a child, nobody could predict that one day he would become a great scientist. He was just like an ordinary child, you know. Albert, uh, sorry, Albert's mother thought that Albert was an abnormal child because he did not behave in the way that other children did. He did not talk or think like other normal children. He was a different kind of child actually. So his mother was worried if he had lesser intelligence in comparison to other children of his age. Albert's mother thought that the little boy's head was a bit too big in comparison to other children's head. So she was worried about his intelligence too. At the age of two and a half, Einstein still wasn't talking. When he finally did learn to speak, he uttered everything twice. Einstein did not know what to do with the other children and his playmates called him Brother Boring. So the youngster played by himself much of the time. He especially loved mechanical toys. Looking at his newborn sister Maya, he is said to have said, Fine, but where are her wheels? Uttered means spoke. So Albert Einstein started talking when he was two and a half years of age. Finally, when he started speaking properly, he used to repeat the words. Einstein did not like other children's company because they called him boring. So, he remained to himself all the time. He used to play with himself only. And from the very beginning, since his childhood, he loved only mechanical toys. Means, such toys which have some kind of machinery was used, such as automated cars and airplanes. So when his sister was born he and, and he looked at her, he could not see her feet as well because she was covered with cloths. So he was wondering after watching her, where the baby's wheels were, that means the feet of the baby actually. He said so because he thought that Maya was a toy, not a human being, because he was always busy in playing with the toys which had a set of wheels to move. Now. A headmaster once told his father that what Einstein chose a prof as a profession wouldn't matter because he'll never make a success at anything. Einstein began learning to play the violin at the age of six because his mother wanted him to. He later became a great amateur violinist, maintaining this skill throughout his life. Amateur means uh, doing something for enjoyment only and not following it as the profession. So one day, the headmaster of Einstein, uh, Einstein's school told his father that Einstein is not like other normal children. He is the stupid kind of person or the child. And he would never be successful in whatever profession he chose. Now, though Einstein was only a uh, very good violinist, he learned playing the violin at the age of six only because his mother wanted him to learn to play it. All his life he played violin as a hobby for his personal interest, not as a profession. 
but albert einstein was not a bad pupil he went to high school in munich where einstein's family had moved when he was 15 months old and scored good marks in almost every subject einstein hated the school's regimentation and often clashed with his teachers at the age of 15 einstein felt so stifled that there he had uh, sorry he left the school for good now pupil means student and munich is a city in uh, germany and uh, here the word regimentation means strict kind of discipline clashed means argued and stifled means suffocated and for good means for good future so everybody was thinking that uh, einstein was not like normal children but it was not truly correct einstein was not a bad student actually he went to his school in a munich sorry in munich because his family had moved from alm to munich when he was only 15 months old after reaching there he started his study and scored good marks in almost every subjects now the school where einstein went had a very strict discipline which he disliked too much due to that he often argued with his teachers for their different opinions and opposed them at uh, every different topic and at the age of 15 einstein felt so suffocated in that environment because he could not follow the strict discipline and so he decided to leave the school forever the previous year albert's parents had moved to milan and left their son with relatives after prolonged discussion einstein got his wish to continue his education in german speaking switzerland in a city which was more liberal than munich so liberal means that respects of other opinions too so when albert einstein left the school one year before that his parents had moved to another city milan which is in italy albert was left behind in munich with his relatives only the school in munich was very strict he could not continue his study there so he had a long discussion with his family members and relatives to change his school and finally his parents agreed to put him in a school in switzerland and the language used there for communication was german the school environment was more liberal than the school of munich so here uh, einstein felt much uh, good and he was feeling much satisfied than the school of munich now einstein was highly gifted in mathematics and interested in physics and after finishing school he decided to study at a university in zurich but science wasn't the only thing that appealed to the dashing young men with the walrus mouth stick walrus means big and dashing means handsome now einstein was good at studies he was highly gifted in mathematics so he was ex- exceptionally good in mathematics and he also had interest in physics once he finished his school he joined this university in zurich that is in switzerland itself but the handsome young man einstein was not only interested in science and mathematics other than science and mathematics he had interest in something else also so let's see what were the things in which he was interested children you can see two pictures here one is of einstein in 1900 when he was at the age of 21 and the second one is einstein in 1995 as we remember him now okay so we remember this picture of einstein this is the previous picture now he also felt a special interest in a fellow student mileva marik whom he found to be a clever creature This young Serb had come to Switzerland because the university in Zurich was one of the few in Europe where women could get degrees. So, the uh, Serb means that belongs to Serbia, and uh, so other than maths and physics, Albert Einstein liked one of his fellow students, and her name was Mileva Marik. He thought she was very clever, sharp, and intelligent. they met at the university of zurich and mileva belonged to serbia so she is called a serb serbia is a country 
she came from serbia to switzerland because the university in zurich was one of the few university in europe which gave degrees to female students too now einstein saw in her an ally against the philistines those people in his family and the university with whom he was constantly at odds here ally me ally means a friend or a compa uh, companion and philistines means one who don't like art music and literature as well so einstein felt that meleva was a friend because she also liked art literature and music like him and both shared this common interest in those days when having interest in art literature and music was not considered to be good so those people who were interested in all these things they used to call their opponents philistines and albert einstein's family and many people in the country were not in favor of this so against such people albert einstein and meleva's unity helped them to face the situation now the couple fell in love letters survive in which they put their affection into words mixing science with tenderness so einstein and meleva were came very close to each other and they fell into love and they also exchanged love letters to express their feelings for each other they used to write such kinds of letter where they used to mix science with their feelings like uh, letters survive in which they put their affection into words mixing science with tenderness wrote einstein how happy and proud i shall be when we both have brought our work on relativity to a victorious conclusion victorious conclusion means final conclusion so there is an example of a letter in which einstein wrote about his scientific invention and said that he would be very proud on that day when they would finally conclude their paper on the theory of relativity because they both were working on this theory what is this theory we will continue in the next part in 1900 at the age of 21 albert einstein was a university graduate and unemployed he worked as a teaching assistant gave private lessons and finally secured a job in 1902 as a technical expert in the patent office in bern that is the capital of switzerland while he was supposed to be assessing other people's inventions Einstein was actually developing his own ideas in secret. He is said to have jokingly called his desk drawer at the work the Bureau of Theoretical Physics. Patent means a document which gives the right of an invention to an inventor. So from 1900 to 1902 Einstein worked as a teaching assistant and gave private lectures also because he was in search of a good job. Finally in 1902 he got a job in Bern that is the capital of Switzerland and he got a job of technical officer in the patent office in Bern Einstein was supposed to check or evaluate the inventions done by other people and give them a right of an invention but on the other hand he was making his own inventions too but secretly Einstein later said that desk the desk on which he worked was the office of theoretical physics actually because there only he started working on his inventions and all the related papers regarding his inventions he kept them in his desk drawer that's why he called it jokingly the office of theoretical physics so children this is all about for today i hope that this part is clear to all of you thank you all of you Have a nice day to all.